I'll, I'll begin the introduction. Hello to all already connected. I'm uh, Liliana Trif, health, uh, health representative uh, uh, for Oracle, working especially with uh, People's of Solutions. Uh, thank you also to uh, Sabine Grodidier because uh, she helped us a lot in the organization of this webinar. Uh, it was also uh, her idea to have uh, people of ERP um, as uh, the main subject of our uh, presentation to, that we'll have today. Uh, Amira Morgos, our senior director for people of ERP, will speak to you today about the solution. Thank you, Amira, for being present. Uh, for Amira, it's really early in the morning. If I'm not uh, uh, wrong, uh, it's only seven in the morning uh, for you. Amira, so again, special thanks for uh, helping us today. So, uh, regarding the administrative part, uh, Amira will have a presentation of one hour and a half. Um, if you have questions, you can address them because Amira wants to have an interactive session, but uh, she can also answer to your questions at the end uh, of the presentation, so you can write uh, the questions in the chat. So uh, from my side, this is, uh, let's say, the introduction. I'll let Amira um, begin. Again, if, if you have administrative questions, I'll uh, answer to you by, by chat. Or at the end, Amira will answer you to the technical and specific questions for people of ERP. Thank you. Thank you, Liliana. Hi, everyone. My name is Amira Marcos. I lead the PeopleSoft strategy team focused on financials. Today, we will try and provide an overview update and roadmap for the PeopleSoft ERP solutions, which are varied and expansive. See, I think I'm stuck here. All right, here we go. So you're all familiar with our legal slide and content, so we, we won't continue down this path too long. As you can see, PeopleSoft has a robust roadmap focused on strate the strategic initiatives of simplification, analytics, leveraging cloud, emerging technologies, reducing customizations, as well as customer-driven enhancements and, exp and expansions. We'd love for our customers to keep using and voting on idea space because we are using the, the platform heavily. So we do collect an enhancement requests from our user groups but we also look at idea space and we look at our customer advisory boards as well. Oracle is committed to investing in the PeopleSoft product line and giving customers a rolling 10 years of premier support. You're not only supported here, right? This, these are not only bug fixes, but we are working with you and our, and our greater customer base to innovate and achieve your business objectives. The PeopleSoft ERP solution suites are focused on simplifying collaboration expanding visibility to critical data, and continuing to automate the business process to support your organization's business objectives, while all the time reducing costs. Now, this is a non-exhaustive eye chart to show some of the expansions we've delivered across the ERP over the past two years or so, to support what you've asked for to improve productivity and expand innovation and to reduce costs. I'll be overviewing, um, overviewing examples in each theme area with a discussion of the roadmap as well. So as I go, I'm gonna cover as many of the solutions as I can. You can imagine this is a, a Herculean task. During this unprecedented time, our goal is to be there for our customers and to show increased levels of responsiveness and flexibility. We're prioritizing COVID-19 related service requests above all normal work and identifying whether we need to make changes to our products to accommodate new policies. We've already received requests from customers and have in fact responded uh, with changes to the appropriate products. As an example, higher ed, and these are just examples, higher ed asked for an efficient mechanism to support refunds to students. The accounts payable team responded with a mass load of single payment vouchers. State and local agencies ask for the ability to, the ability to suspend overdue charges for items and receivables delivered a change that supports that request. Now, we know that healthcare is on the front lines and ask for the ability to quickly find and approve high priority purchase orders that, ch that change has been delivered um, by the procurement team. In some cases, the solution could be a change of business practice or flow, and we will deliver documentation to reflect those existing abilities. The links that you see are hot and active, and when, so when you receive this, this presentation in PDF form, you'll have access or it, the links will take you to, that, to those areas so you can see the changes. 
We use new technologies to facilitate our personal lives. We should be able to leverage similar techniques for work to check on expense report, requisitions, and financial metrics. The chatbot for expenses is focused on two different user types. The first is a frequent traveler who's on the go and wishes to check status of their travel and expense document. They may be in a taxi and want to quickly to see if their expense reports have been approved, and if not, why not? In addition, they can see if their reports have been paid. An alternate user is a casual user who may need to check to see if their expense report has been approved or paid. Rather than logging into the system, they can simply interact with the chatbot to get the information they need anywhere, anytime. The first release of the expenses chatbot provides any level of user with the easy to use inter inquiry interaction to check expense report payment status and whether or not their travel related documents have been approved. If not approved, they can further query the bot to see the reason and which approver denied the expense. This came out in image 36, which was just delivered by the way, guys, a couple of weeks ago. On the roadmap, we plan to provide more functionality to add, to actually add expense entries to my wallet and then, then, then create the expense report from the wallet entry. In addition, a user traveling to an unfamiliar location may use the bot to query what the allowed per diem amount for any expense type is or are for that location. The ERP team is working across the suites and in innovating to develop chatbots that provide assistance to the right users. The procurement team has already released the requester bot in image 34, which came available in December of 2019. The financial team, we are working on a supplier assistant chatbot that allows suppliers to simply check on invoices and payment status via e-settlements. The bot can indicate if an invoice is partially paid and give an update of ongoing tasks. The intent here, as with all the chatbots, is to continue to expand collaboration with, with whatever, whichever user. In this case, it's with your suppliers with a focus on reducing your costs. Through the integration with Oracle Internet of Things or IoT Asset Monitoring Cloud Service, you can accelerate asset tracking at any time and more importantly, the maintenance of your organization assets. The integration with Oracle Internet of Things or IoT Asset Monitoring Cloud Service involves bi-directional communication between IoT, PeopleSoft Asset Management and Maintenance Management. In image 30 with IoT Asset Monitoring, you gain real-time visibility to an asset's location, health, and utilization. You can track assets anytime, anywhere, and you can even predict future events. Speaking of asset management and maintenance management, the asset inspections feature in maintenance management allows maintenance organizations to collect and evaluate both qualitative and quantitative data about the condition of an asset. This data is used for trend analysis, regulatory reporting, and to trigger maintenance events and alerts. In Image 31, My Inspections provides your field technicians with an on-the-go solution to quickly collect and evaluate asset inspection data while all the while, while at the site, sorry, of the asset being inspected. My Inspections extends the asset inspection feature as a new tile on the Mobile Technician Fluid homepage. And the link that I've provided there is to the, the, the video feature overview of, of this new feature. It is not uncommon to have multiple service requests submitted for the same asset. To more efficiently plan and schedule the maintenance of a single asset, customers can ask to associate multiple related service requests to a single work order. Image 35 of maintenance management has brought that simplification that leads to greater, the greater efficiency for assets. The new asset transaction tile transforms employee AM self-service by extending functionality so that custodial asset transfer and disposal requests are not restricted to only asset custodians. Additionally, updates to custodial information have been automated along with the processing of asset disposal or retirement transactions. The legacy AM manager self-service functions are incorporated into fluid approvals lifting the restriction that only chart field department managers can approve transactions. One of our higher ed customers sent out a request on their email listserv and asked if anyone knew if PeopleSoft had a solution to reduce the annoying vendor calls. Well, actually we do. It's called PeopleSoft Settlements, a front end solution that leverages the PeopleSoft supplier portal to enable collaboration with your suppliers and allows the suppliers to take a number of actions 
with the intent to reduce the annoying vendor calls. Kaiser Permanente, a large healthcare customer, presented on their use of e-settlements and the benefits they've gained from it. They do in fact leverage the, the supplier portal, the PeopleSoft supplier portal, and have 1,000 suppliers leveraging the portal. Through the e-settlements inquiries for invoices and payments, they eliminated 250,000 supplier calls looking for their payments. They also leveraged a feature that we implemented called ad hoc discounting and, and have saved $250,000 in the first four months of use. Now they did in fact change the feature. They changed dynamic discounting. So we're in the process of discovering what Kaiser needed as part of our roadmap work. In addition, Kaiser just moved further up in the, up the, in the images for 9.2 and have leveraged continuous adoption by rolling out new features, including PO flip, right, for the e-settlement suppliers to further reduce costs. The mirror image of e-settlements is PeopleSoft e-bill payment. It allows you to send your customers an electronic invoice and allows them to easily and quickly pay you online. One of our, one of our uh, customers, UC Berkeley Higher Education, implemented e-bill for their students and faculty who live on campus. And they also use it for customers that rent out their facilities. The state of Montana, a public sector agency, uses e-bill for constituents to pay for license fees. E-bill payment enables collaboration with customers, automates the customer invoice process, and expedites cash flow. Why am I bringing up these, these two solutions? Because they focus on your external users. They're not internal, they're external for which, of course, you want to have simple, simplified user interface, such as Fluid, and make the whole situation much simpler. This is also important for your own, for your own users. I see that, and we're going to talk about them in a minute. As you can see, UC Berkeley has been using e for a number of years and has reduced customizations, eliminated manual efforts and receivables, and was able to get their money faster. UC Berkeley also has presented on their solution, and they are in fact using the Fluid interface already delivered. And they're actually, for their students, they rolled it out on the phone. So it's, it's doable on the phone as well as on a, a large form factor. The ePro team, eProcurement, has been working diligently to expand the power of the Fluid requisition. Image 31 brings multi-selective multi facets, additional sort options, and configurable search fields. In addition, your users can now view their choices in a card view for value add comparison. The procurement team continues to work on the user interface to provide strength in the form of order sheets and the ease of use, such as enhancements to the fluid my requisition. These are just some items on the roadmap. The, the, the teams across the ERP solutions and, and, and PeopleSoft gave me a whole slew of slides and a whole slew to talk about, but there just isn't enough time and there's not enough um, content, if you will, to go through every, everything all at once. So I try to pick examples for each area so that you get a sense of what's going on and the robust nature of the roadmap as well. Another solution that touches a good number of users across the organization is expenses. The expenses team has been working to extend the simplification and provide greater power for people's soft expenses. Recent deliveries for simplification include fluid time entry in image 34 and the GPS mileage calculation integration in image 32. The expenses team also is working on a very robust roadmap for people's soft expenses with examples in leveraging the privilege template for approval, the ability to copy an expense report, and much more. Again, they provided me with a whole slew of slides. For your casual and expert users, it is easier to search and act on relevant transactions. Global search via Elastic was already delivered for the procure to pay business flow, including expenses, asset management, and GL. In image 30, global search is enabled for the credit to cash business uh, process that includes projects, contracts, grants, billing, and accounts receivable. This is kind of important when we were talking about Elastic because we will come back to Elastic Search in a different, in a different vein when we talk about reporting and visibility of data. PeopleSoft customer contracts in image 36, again, image 36 just went out a couple of weeks ago, has provided customers with a new fluid function that allows proper focus on past due billing and revenue events and the ability to facilitate responses to inquiries. We have created a, fe a video feature overview of this new feature and the link on this slide will take you to the PeopleSoft YouTube channel as well. 
Higher education and public sector customers ask for distributed or decentralized accounting, while the commercial base asks for fast and easy adjustments, especially around period close. Leveraging Fluid UI and a configuration template, PeopleSoft GL, provides for the simple journal in Fluid UI. As various customers ask for, you can, get, you can set it up so the users enter the most minimal and critical of information. This is essentially having the journal your way as you roll out to the different departments, agencies, or regions. It's pretty fantastic. PeopleSoft Cash Management homepage, delivered in Image 10, provides those with very specialized treasurer's office users with a simple fluid user interface and enab enables your leads to manage day-to-day -day cash positions, investments, and debts to boost productivity and increase yields. In Image 25, we deliver full drill downs to the source transactions. And in Image 27, we provided the ability to transfer funds and fluid, but more than that, we added a new feature. When I, when I convert a, a fluid page or a fluid function, uh, plastic function into fluid, I always try to give value add so when you move to Fluid, you're not just getting what you had before, looking different, right? And hopefully simpler, of course. But the point is to give you an ability that you didn't have before, right, in Classic. In this case, the ability to do a what if before the request is submitted, before I, trans before I transfer money or I submit a transfer for mo a money movement, I want to do a what if. This is a hugely valuable feature in that it prevents errors and reduces overdraft fees. So the point of going to Fluid should be a value add on top of the fact that it's the Fluid UI. We have many global organizations using PeopleSoft Cash and Treasury, but you can see that everyone can benefit. Lone Star Community College System is a higher education customer, customer in the United States. They've implemented Cash and Treasury and have presented on the value that they've gained. They reduced their bonds payable by $24 million and have saved time and reconciliation as well as accounting for their instruments. PeopleSoft has a long history of expanding its reporting and analytic capabilities, so PS Query, Pivot Grids for Slice and Dice, Simplified Analytics that allows end users to render analytic content their way. Additionally, PeopleTools has added the capabilities of user-created thresholds and notifications for effective and timely use of data. One of the latest deliveries of Fluid Pivot Grids is the Supplier Payments Analysis, which provides for visibility into contract versus non-contract spend, as well as PO versus non-PO spend. This is a capability long requested by the financials and procurement customers across the board. And it came out in image 32. Now, the PeopleSoft ERP solution set is driven by analytics to manage financial operations. We have delivered operational homepages to support the critical functions, such as procurement and projects in Image 10 that provide navigational aids, the work that has to be executed, i.e. the work centers, as well as operational metrics for the user community to better execute and manage the financial operation. These are just some examples, guys. I think I've missed one homepage. There's one homepage here that I forgot to add, but that is, I wanted to make the point. PeopleSoft continues its work to bring our customers options when it comes to reporting and visualization tools. Kibana is an open source reporting and analytic tool that allows organizations to visualize data in elastic search repositories. There are distinct advantages to the use of Kibana, such as robust visualizations and speed optimization. So this is where elastic search comes in. If you haven't implemented elastic search, if you haven't started leveraging it, and if, if you wanted another reason for it, instead of just global search, this is it. It comes with a free reporting tool, visualization tool, which I'm going to demo for you guys today. All right, so the financial team is working on creating, actually we, we've just delivered this. We've delivered the, the visualization content for accounts payable to be easily accessible via the payables operations homepage. The tile may access the Kibana visualizer with full use of PeopleSoft security and navigation. We've created a YouTube v, uh, to VFO, and you'll have access to it from the slide as well. All right, so we're gonna do a demo right now, our first demo, hopefully this works. And we delivered the Kibana analytics that you're about to see for accounts payable in image 36, again, a couple of weeks ago. 
All right, let me get to, and of course I, I timed out. That's what always happens to me. So again, I hope this works guys, because you know, I'm a user and I sometimes make a lot of mistakes. What I've done here is I've signed in as VP1, our favorite user who has access to everything. And we have landed on the payables operations homepage. This homepage was delivered, like I said, in image 24, where we delivered the access to the payables account uh, work center, right? Content, how long does it take to approve a voucher? How long it takes you to, to pay a voucher? This is very bad, right? How many late payments you have, the navigation collection for accounts payable, and some metrics and uh, additional metrics. So we've I just added to the homepage two new tiles. The tiles take you to the Kibana dashboard for accounts, two dashboards actually for Kibana for, for accounts payable. The first dashboard is early detection and monitoring. This is the tile of information or the piece of information, just a piece of the visual of the dashboard, if you will. And for the, for the visualizer, when I say visualizer, I'm gonna show you what I mean. So right now I'm in, I'm in PeopleSoft, I'm in the navigation, I'm in control, I'm controlled, I have security on, everything is beautiful, right? So I click on early detection and monitoring, I'm still in the PeopleSoft system, right? I'm still looking at PeopleSoft, I'm in, I can navigate still, right? I'm con I have a complete control and I have the, the metadata that PeopleSoft has. So what I see here is a visual is a dashboard of visualizations. There are four up here with content and then a listing of the transactions that are in place. Okay, so I just loaded the transactions that are part of this. What this is showing me is the transact the vouchers that have come in and processed overnight. Right. So as, as we were all sleeping, this this trend these transactions came in and you can see the time that they came in and the source of it and the source of the voucher. This visualization here shows us our, our payments or our routers that we're processing by payment terms and currency. So now the operation can truly focus on those things that can give me the highest, the highest discount. Going further down, I just want to show you what's here, the vouchers by currency and voucher source. So now you can have multiple attributes in the same, in the same visualization. So as you can see here, this is the USD currency, just for kicks. What happens if I click on just the currency? I want to see US dollar transactions. Notice that everything in the uh, dashboard changed, right? All the metrics changed. So a filter changed and the filter was added right up here, okay? So I just by clicking on something within the visualizations changes the entire dashboard. It doesn't just change one piece of it, it changes everything. And I can take this out and basically I'm done. I've changed, I've brought it back to where it was. The other um, great feature about all this is we can drill and here I want, I'm looking for a particular transaction and I'm not seeing the one I need. So I'm going to ignore that for a moment. But from here, you can actually link back into, people, into a PeopleSoft transaction. We have provided the link, there's only one way you can link. So in other words, for a particular dashboard, if I take you to voucher entry, that's where you're gonna go. It's, there's, the related actions concept doesn't work. We're dealing with a tool that we don't own, right? So Kibana is owned by Elastic, by Elastic, the Elastic's team. We are working with them through people tools, but we don't control that tool. It's, a, it's another, it's a different source tool. Um, but, so we were looking for related actions. I think I know what everybody's gonna ask for. But here we take you to document status, the document status inquiry. So you can see all the transactions and you can further navigate from there. Okay, so what I wanted to show you also is, this is, um, the Kibana is very powerful from a time perspective. So what we're looking at is today so far, the time elements, right? So what, what does this mean? So it literally is last night, overnight, and the transactions that came through this morning, right, through now. So if I change this and say, well, I want to say this week, right? So I click on this week and the system, and then hit refresh, of course, that would be helpful. Notice that everything changed, right? So this week, so far, it's this, it's this situation that I have. And the transactions have changed, of course. So instead of 32, I have 205 total transactions that I can link into. I'm going to go back to this so I don't cause a total disaster today. 
Okay. There's a number of other, of other changes you can make. You want to see something specific or you want to make it bigger. So I'm going to, I want to see the full screen. Each visualization can be seen in full screen or I can send it back and make it, I can minimize it. Okay. Now, remember I said you're, what I've just done, all these things that, I, that I've done and I, I brought them back. As a user, we don't want people changing the, the Kibana dashboard as they slice and dice, as they make changes, as they want, right? Because others could be using the same dashboard. However, if you have access, you can open this dashboard. I'm opening it in the visualizer in the PeopleSoft uh, database, right? If I say open in Kibana, I'm actually going to the Kibana instance. The, 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 um, I'm opening it in Kibana and here I can actually make changes. I won't make changes right now, but I do want to show you guys something and I had to come into Kibana and actually do that. From in this context now, I'm in a new window, right? In this context, I'm actually seeing the dashboard and I can, if I have access, make a change to the dashboard, save it or save it as, as something else. So I don't interrupt or I don't disturb those people that have used the, the original dashboard. What I wanted to show you is kind of how easy it is to create a visualization. So when we say visualization, I know we're creating new words here. This is the visualization, this piece right here, whereas the whole is, is the dashboard. So if I click on the visualize icon here, and now I, you guys know me, for those of you who know me, I, you know I'm a functional person. I'm going to add a visualization. I'm going to create, God help us, um, an actual visualization. I'm going to say, I wanna make it into a pie chart, now you have to tell me, okay, so which data set am I using for this? So you literally can go into the different Elasticsearch repositories. So what we did was we indexed the data in the PeopleSoft instance, and the index data now sits in Elastic and sits in repositories. So I actually wanna go into the AP vouchers. This is the, the, the data set that I'm picking from, and it says, okay, how do you want to split this out? How do you want to splice this? So I say, um, ag I'm going to use terms to aggregate, right? How do I want to aggregate the data? Well, okay, so I have to select a field, but like what data element am I working with here? And so I'm going to start typing payment. Oops, I didn't type correctly, of course. I don't do this very well. This is not one of my things. Okay, and I actually want payment terms, right? So I keep typing and I click on payment terms and, and that's good, this is what I wanna do. So I wanna aggregate the transactions that I have, the vouchers by payment terms. Now I actually have this visualization, but keep, stay with me here. I'm trying to do something simple for myself. I click on this button and I've got, well, okay. So there are, I can see that there are seven with this particular payment term, et cetera but this doesn't tell me a whole lot. I go to my options tab right here and I see that the labels were not checked on. So I'm gonna check on labels, show labels, and I, then I apply changes, right? So now I've created a, a cool visualization of my transactions by payment term. I, again, I've already got this defined, but I wanted to show you guys how easy it is um, and simple. You have to know your data, right, obviously, but how easy it is to actually create a visualization and you can tie a visualization to a dashboard. So long as the data set is the same, then it works. So we're gonna do another demo for Kibana in a, in, a, in a moment. So I just wanted to give you guys a sense of how cool this is. It's also very powerful from a performance standpoint. Let me go back to actually, if I stay here, let me actually stay in the, in the demo. I'm going to keep going but I'm going to a different database instance and I'm going to sign in as VP1 again. But in this database instance, I'm going to show you some other cool stuff. Now this is roadmap. So what we just saw for AP was actually delivered in image 36, which was two weeks ago um, or a week ago. So this now is the finance and accounting homepage, our, our finance and accounting homepage that we delivered a number of images ago. And this really focuses on the transactional or the area of GL, right? So there's the GL navigation collection, the work center. If you're a manager, which by definition, maybe you, you could be, right? You get your approval style here. 
um, simple journal that we talked about. This is a navigation to the simple journal. GL business unit, we're going to talk about those in our, in our presentation and the, the financial structure request as well. What we've done here or what we're about to do, so this is the this is roadmap, right, is we've actually created three dashboards for GL, right, three financial particular dashboards for GL. But one of them that we haven't been able to do before. I'm going to start with the operational insight. The operational insight's uh, intent Right now, you can, you can do any number of dashboards. You can create dashboards at will. You can create visualizations at will with your data sets, with your data. Um, the intent of the, operational, of the operational analysis here um, is to provide customers with a means to see where are your transactions coming from, what are the sources of transactions, so that customers can get a sense of this, this, the feeder systems. GL is all about getting data in. Right, so where, or where, are the, where is this data coming from? For customers who are setting up shared services, who want to set up a shared service, this is very important to have in terms of historical trends so you can see where your data is coming from. And you can actually get a count, if you will, by, by department of the journal lines. Um, how many of the transactions are coming in by source are actually in error, right, where you're suspending them? So you can actually see who the problem people are, or the problem areas are in the organization, and where they're coming from. And you can take, take, take corrective action based on that. Again, the transactions um, show up on the bottom, and you can actually take them, take the user somewhere. In this case, you're gonna go to journal entry, right? So that you can see the detail of the journal transactions. And of course, you can filter by different fields, and in this case, you can filter by business units. All right, I'm gonna go back to the home page because I have two more things that I wanna show you guys. It's pretty cool, I, I really think this is very cool. This is an, uh, another dashboard that we created for GL, that we're creating for GL. Um, financial position trending. This is something I've always wanted to be able to do for, for PeopleSoft GL. The GL is very, very powerful in PeopleSoft as you're aware. Um, and we have a lot of data, right? Um, but we needed a, a cool tool to be able to, to showcase that data and to be able to analyze the data. So the GL team actually created this fantastic dashboard, the financial uh, balance uh, trending dashboard that shows you what I'm doing here is I'm getting transactions after, actually off of journal tables. This data set specifically, <coughs> excuse me, is coming off of the journal tables and I can actually see, <coughs> one second, I can actually see the revenues and expenses. So this is the revenue line and this is the expense line. Over time, you can literally see how, how, what, what your financial position is. A journal amount by department, I can actually see the top five expense accounts and the top revenue accounts that I have. Or you can create different, dash, different visualizations. We were also able to do something fantastic with GL. Um, as you all know, for GL, if you can't look at the data by the tree structure, then you, you, haven't, you haven't done anything. And it's not worth even looking at. So we were able to beautifully create the ability to filter this data. So not only do you have the data, but now it's, you're able to filter it with two trees in this case. The account tree, which is up to five nodes, right? Five levels deep and the, and the department tree, which is three levels deep. So now you can actually say, well, okay, so I'm looking at revenues and expenses. What if I just said, well, okay, um, I actually want the income statement accounts and I want, hopefully I do this correctly, God help me. I want just the expense accounts, all right? And I click on refresh. Did I click on refresh? I did click on refresh, right? Something is wrong. I'm doing something wrong, guys. Uh, Mara, you click on apply changes. Oh, I thought I did apply. To, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Thank you, Jen. Guys, this is Jen Wen on my team. She actually worked on all this. And then I apply changes. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate it. I forgot to do that. I, just, I thought hit refresh is the only way to do it. So what I've done here is I'm looking at one one piece of the pie, one piece of the puzzle, just the expenses, right? And so I've actually changed the filters, I've used the trees to the power that, that, is, that is possible to actually slice and dice the data. I can look at business units, I can change this, this um, at will, 
and be able to look at. And of course, the transactions that are, um, oops, if I can go down a little bit, have changed as well. What I saw before wasn't, is not the same as what I'm seeing right now. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to the presentation now so we continue. I will come back to one more demo to show you something that uh, People Tools is, was able to deliver for us. Okay, let me go back here and go to the right slide. So some of these slides that I went through, the, 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 the demo uh, content, if you will, I will unhide and provide for you so that you can have the presentation. Let me just go back to the right slide here. Okay. So continuing forward with, with, with analytics and Kibana specifically, the contracts team, the customer contracts team is working on a customer contracts focused dashboard to help our customers manage their contracts portfolio. They can support operational reallocation of work by analyzing the contracts at the administrator level and reassign contracts from one administrator to another based on workloads. Customers will be enabled to support decisions by assessing which lines of business are growing and which are shrinking through visualizations that identifies active contracts by BU, region, and type. This is their, their dashboard that they're working on as we speak. Across the ERP, we plan to extend the use of Kibana by leveraging existing search indexes and or deliver additional indexes to create analytics as an alternative in slicing and dicing transactional information. The procurement team is working on visualizations of procurement activity to support buyer productivity and efficiency. In expenses, we're looking at expense submitted in various geographical locations with a view to perhaps adjust per diem amounts. In maintenance management, we're looking at delivering one dashboard to provide maintenance planners and supervisors with insights into technician labor assignments and visibility to, us, to unassigned work order tasks. So you, you get the sense that there's a lot of effort being put into this. Um, as I said, Kibana is part of the Elasticsearch tool set and it is a free tool. So there's no additional license to actually using Kibana or leveraging Kibana, at least the way that we're, we're using it. Now the financial, we're gonna move a little bit into a combination of the power, if you will, or the automation theme of ours, as well as the content. This is where they overlap. The financials work centers have been provided to you in Fluid. So we had the work centers in Classic and the, the financials ones specifically have been converted to Fluid to continue the simplification effort. The building work center is now even more robust with the power of simplified analytics. And this is where I wanna show you guys another demo. So this is a demo to show you the use of the power of the work center and the power of analytics at the same time. All right, let's see if I can do this one more time. I'm gonna sign in here. This is a different um, user actually. So Dave Jansky is my credit for cash manager. And I did click on, yes I did, okay. Jason Ashley is my credit cash manager, and when I sign in, I should be in the credit cash operations homepage, which I am. This is um, the homepage is delivered in Image 24 and supports the, uh, the uh, navigation, delegation, or the work, if you will, for credit cash operations, billing and receivables. So you see the, the work centers, the two work centers, approvals, if I have any as a manager. Of course, you can obviously use these homepages and leverage them at, for any user, not just the managers, right? So if I click on Billing Work Center, so notice that we did deliver um, the, the Fluid Framework for the Work Centers. So in the Fluid Framework, the My Work, right? Um, the exceptions, the My Links, the My Queries, et cetera, they're all in one plate, in one navigation, if you will, or one page. There's no, there's no multiple tabs here. Um, and I have to tell you guys that we are doing something. I don't, I wanna preempt myself on my presentation, but we are doing more in the fluid work centers than we are in the classic. So this is the building work center. For those of you who, who use building or not, this, the idea here is an example, right? Here is the My Work for billing. And the one work I'm looking at is invoices not finalized. You've got to finalize invoices in billing to move forward. There's 30 of these things, right? What I, what I, what is missing from the work center, and I hate to say something is missing from any PeopleSoft, anything, right? But that is a fact. 
I don't, as a manager, I can see the work, right? I can see who's got what and who, well, I can see what I have. What I don't see here is who's got the work. So I've got 30 of these and I could have 130 of these. I don't know who's got the work. So what we've done is People Tools has enabled us to create simplified analytics. The ability to allow an end user to slice and dice, not slice and dice, to create the pivot grid that I want. So a pivot grid is out there and I as a user go in and look at it and I say, eh, too many, too many facets. I don't want all these fields, right? I want to get rid of this. But I don't want to touch the PS query. I don't want to touch the detail just because I don't know what I'm doing. So People Tools has enabled us to create analytics, to, create, to simply take a pivot grid and say, uncheck these fields. I don't want to see them. And then I see what I want to see as an end user. So what we've done here is we've connected, as related information, a pivot grid to the work center. Okay. Now, if I go on and click on it, the Q2 specialist workload, that's what I want to know. I want to know who the specialists are, the building specialists are. So I get to see, this is the, the simplified analytic that I actually saved in advance of this demo. So I can actually go back in and change this and change the, the, what it looks like. I don't change the logic, nor do I change the structure. What I'm changing is what the look and feel. How do I want to see this? What feels do I want to see? What I'm looking at here and what I'm getting from all this is that Catherine O'Toole has a lot of work and some other folks on this team don't have a whole lot to do. So I need to fix this. So the, the power of this is it tells me who's got the work. I know who, uh, how much work I have. Now I know who's got it. So I'm actually going to go back to my credit cash operations and show you guys a particular feature, a new feature that we delivered recently it's called invoice mass maintenance. So with regards to that workload, that can be done with any work center. It's not just dependent on billing or specific to billing. This is just the example that we've rolled out. If I go to invoice mass maintenance, so if from billing, customer said, I want to be able to move the workload, especially if exactly right. I've got an overwhelmed bunch of people and I need to spread the work out a little bit. So I basically want to see who the billing specialists are or who's got work. So I know that Catherine O'Toole has a tremendous amount of work. So I want to be able to search and say, okay, this is all the stuff that she's got. And for some reason, I'm not seeing what I, what I should see. I think I made a mistake somewhere here. Okay. So I'm going to make, I'm just going to act like I, I did this right. I think I'm in the wrong place, but that's okay. I'm going to select this transaction and say, but well, okay. So this is what Catherine has. And I'm going to actually change the value or go into look at who else on the team can take the work. So we saw that Gary O'Reilly, right? had less to do, if you will, than, than she did. So I'm going to change the actual, actual effort. And all I have to do is say yes, replace. So I'm changing the specialist from, from Catherine to, to, to Gary, and I'm done. And so that's kind of, I wanted to show the flow of being able to, show, to, to see the work in the work center, to see the analytic tell me who has the work and then to actually take action and delegate the work via billing mass maintenance, uh, via invoice mass maintenance, mass maintenance. All right, let me go back now to my presentation. Okay, we're gonna move forward. So uh, um, another example of simplified analytics I wanted to share in a, in a different area than just financials, the supplier watch list. It's part of the procurement operations homepage delivered some time ago. The procurement team have delivered simplified analytic content that is related and can provide more contextual information at a supplier level. So the supplier and can be used for effective business decisions. The supplier watch list is here and it's, it's, it was delivered again some time ago. The team added simplified analytics to that supplier watch list. So now you can actually see specific content about a particular supplier as related information. And the users, again, can modify the UI, if you will, or what an analytic looks like versus going in and changing the pivot grid. So with one pivot grid, with one query, one pivot grid, you can suit, if you will, or appeal or apply to multiple users who actually want to see something different and can actually make that distinction and, and make those changes. All right, as we, we move forward, we talked about the building work center. I'm glad I was able to show it to you at least at some level. 
PeopleSoft delivered the common and configurable work center framework in 9.2, and the ERP team delivered functional work centers for our customers to use. We've delivered, I think, like 16 or 17 work centers all total. We've also been expanding the framework itself from the ability to slice and dice the My Work. So one customer, Australian New Zealand Bank, told me on a business trip, they said, we can't use your work center. I was, I was just flabbergasted. So they basically said, we want to be able to, uh, a payables manager, for example, wants to be able to um, look at the work in Thailand versus the work in Australia versus the work in New Zealand. They have to go in and change filters for the My Work in the work center many times in order to do that. They wanted one click. So we did provide that, guys. It's called Scope. With one click, you can actually slice and dice now the My Work itself. And that is, um, has been delivered. We delivered it not just in Classic, but in Fluid as well. So these are just some examples of the latest and greatest for the work center itself. Now, from a roadmap perspective, we're not stopping. We're working to support the ability to email others in the organization for one or more transactions within my work. Um, actually, I'm gonna go back for a second. I wanna talk a little bit about this. We delivered in the billing work center, as you can see here, the ability to email one or more transactions to a different person to get more information, for example. So as we've been talking about this from, from a customer perspective, customers said, what about the rest of the work centers? Because it's not just billing that has this need. It, it exists everywhere. So we are working right now, and we, this is only gonna be supported for the financial work centers because we wanna make this change from a, to, to the fluid work framework itself and be able to provide that. So the financial team will be coming out with the ability to email the, the transactions via the, from the work center, from the respective work centers. Now we've all, we're also looking at a robust capability implemented by the HCM team. They took the, the framework and they said, well, I, this is fluid. I should be able to hide and unhide the fields on the my, my work results, right? And so we're looking at that. And so now the user can say, I wanna hide a particular field. I'm not sure that everybody's gonna love this, but this is, customers have really asked, have been, have been asking for this. So from a work center perspective, if you haven't implemented it, please look at implementing them. And by all means, if you're going to implement the financial work centers, implement them in Fluid, because the Fluid framework is continuing. All right, going back and we're gonna go forward into assets. Asset accounts process hundreds, if not thousands of interface rows each month. AM receives interface data from a variety of sources, such as purchasing, payables, and more. Enhancements delivered help organizations isolate errors to draw attention to what those errors are for more efficient issue resolution. Image 28 provided online review of pre-interface errors instead of having to go to the message log. Image 28 also enhanced the transaction loader process to isolate interface lines and error and allow valid lines to process normally. Image 30, further enhance the transaction loader process to return multiple errors affecting interface lines. So lots of focus on efficiency here from a, from a uh, transaction error processing perspective. Okay, lease accounting, very big topic. Image 10 and 19 laid the foundation for the current support of lease accounting. Image 19 is, the, is when real estate management was renamed to lease administration. Payables leases are no longer only property and only operating. You can enter payable leases for all asset types, both operating and finance. Image 24 introduced new features for ASC 842 and IFRS 16. Image 27 is when shared product functionality was released for customers licensed only for lease administration. It was also the image when the migration and transition activity guide was delivered. You can migrate AM leases to the shared data structure to leverage the common object. Transition to the new leasing guidelines whenever you're ready. So we did it in phases for you guys, so you can take advantage of what is, what is essentially a, a, a huge regulatory requirement. In terms of, there, these are some examples of the roadmap for asset lifecycle management solutions, from enhancing asset data spreadsheet import to partial retirement of multiple asset leases. Again, very difficult to go through everything that, that the team has in place, but just to give you a sense of what's going on. The project slash grants teams have been delivering value with a number of enhancements to deliver on simplicity and efficiency. As examples, updating invalid bill plans and math and extending the project team end dates. Projects have long had the ability to compress the data in project resource 
tables, they have since expanded this to provide visibility into compression results before the compression is actually executed. So essentially, it's a what if. What if I did compress the projects? What will this look like? And so they, the project team provides you visibility into that. The credit to cash flow has seen expansions based on customer feedback that focus on simplification of the user interface, efficiencies in building and receivables functions, such as the ability to delete bills and cancel status, and output multiple copies of invoices at once. Again, there's a number of enhancements. We keep adding to this page and I keep changing the fonts so that I can get as many, many more features, if you will, or many more functions that we've, we've expanded and, and made possible. From the roadmap perspective, there's also quite a healthy and robust roadmap here. The focus is on helping our customer base speed up invoice processing with more efficient means of executing processes and billing, as well as enhancing collections. We're looking at implementing payment plans for receivables. This is something that longstanding and customers have asked for. It. Not only do we look to do payment plans and receivables, but we, what we want is for those of you who, who would use or are using e-bill payments from a customer standpoint, is to have the customer is enable payment plans from the customer perspective. So the customer can say, I want to go on a bill plan, on, an, on a payment plan from e -bill payment. But first we need to lay or in the, the structure, if you will, for payment plans to exist in receivables in the first place. All right, it was really hard to put this content together um, from, a, from, an, from an invoice to pay perspective or from a prepare to pay perspective, because I want to show off how much we've been doing in, in accounts payable. But the, the intent of our enhancements throughout in this area for accounts payable is to really help our, our customers take advantage of the supplier discounts to improve the balance sheet. So valuable customer requests for expansions. And this is literally all came from the customer base, like OCR, OFR imaging that was implemented in image 18. The voucher staging cleanup. What about those vouchers that you upload twice, right? Or the files that come in twice? The voucher copy, again, this is long request uh, enhancements for vouchers we've been putting into the product to further reduce cost of AP operations. So please look at our cumulative feature overview so you can get a sense of how much work has been done here. The payment request is something that customers simple, ask for simple simplicity and we've delivered on the payment request and that's one of the examples I forgot to add, I'm sorry guys. I forgot to add the payment request up front in our first theme. But it's a simple entry point for, for users who went off and purchased a service or a good and are now submitting an invoice to accounts payable. So if customers asked for simple, we delivered simple and they've been asking for enhancements and we've even delivered that. The ability to copy the request, the ability to add a drop zone. Um, the drop zones are the ability to enter on a, to create on a page data elements that are not necessarily part of that page, but you want to include them. And so that leveraging of drop zones reduces your customization and gives you, gives you the value out of adding a field to a page where it doesn't, where we didn't create that, you've added it, but we have to enable it. So for payment requests, we've enabled drop zones. All right, keeping going. One of the big changes that we've made uh, for the whole of Procure to Pay is we've implemented the UPN GTIN, Global Transaction Identification Number Data Elements. This is a data model change actually, and we don't like to make these, two, these big changes, but this is necessary. In order to support this data model, we had to make a data model change, and we delivered it in image 30, but across all of Procure to Pay. So all the procurement and accounts payable modules are support, now support the UPN GTIN data elements. The use of procurement cards is still very much a reality for many organizations who wish to control spend. Over the course of multiple PeopleSoft update images, the plan is to provide improvements in various areas designed to expand efficiencies in the user experience. Some examples that we've actually just delivered in image 36, um, the mass update expiration dates uh, provide an effective date and status of the card holder for historical purpose. Um, and more, as you can see on the list, I've added to the, to, I actually ran out of room here. So the, the procurement team is working on procurement card uh, maintenance and processing, and these are just the samples of some of the deliverables that came out at image 36. They are working on a further roadmap in this area as well, because there's more to be done. Now, we have a robust roadmap for procure to pay, including your request, such as duplicate invoice checking, 
for payment requests. So this came in from our customer base. I want to be able to check for duplicate payments against the payment request itself. We're not, we're not doing that right now. The ability to execute matching based on lag days and, and more. These are just some examples from an, from an accounts payable specifically for, for roadmap. So the efficient clearing of match exceptions is critical to the recognition of supplier discounts. Due to segregation of duties, procurement users like buyers, requesters, and receivers are not allowed to add comments or attachments to vouchers. But in order to help resolve match exceptions, their input is required. The proposed new match collaboration center will allow procurement users to add their input to the clearing of match exceptions. Customers can configure their way through assignments for clearing the exception. It is expected to allow dynamic UI that is dependent on user roles. The new expansion will greatly benefit from the simplicity of fluid UI, related actions, and related information. The members of the Procure to Pay Advisory Group have provided input to this critical expansion, and we appreciate their effort. So we actually go to the Procure to Pay Advisory Group, we go to the user groups that throughout and we get, in, we get feedback. And so this is a very big feature that we've delivered, that we're working on, match exception collaboration. The ability to assign the exception and then have the, the folks who are assigned actually work their way to clearing the exception or figuring out what should be done to clear the inspection, having the right users actually do the clearing. So while we do have a robust matching engine, this is kind of a, a missing piece, if you will, and we're working on that. <clears throat> We're going to move forward into a different area, uh, the, the center of the world, if we, if we can call it that. Um, as customers' business changes, they can leverage the power of PeopleSoft Financials to easily support the changes. Customers can use the GLBU management to leverage the dynamic activity guide to add or ma and maintain business entities. Our customers have asked for the expansion of this, of course, as soon as we delivered the GLBU creation activity guide, they asked for the expansion into the subledgers, and this is a, this is a roadmap item. So we do, we do know we have to work on this, and we are in the process. As customers change their business and their reporting structures, they also need the ability to change their financial chart of accounts and the hierarchies that are used to manage them. We've delivered the very robust and highly collaborative financial structure requests in Image 25. Members of, the, members of our customer advisory board and user groups have provided feedback to this and it's very, very helpful because we delivered a very, very robust function, if you will. So we had a classic called the chart field request. This actually replaces it, the financial structure request, and it goes very much beyond what we had delivered originally in classic. Customers have also asked for the ability to continue to discontinue a business entity, shut down essentially a business unit, and this is a roadmap item. Speaking of the financial chart, we have delivered on support for global organizations by working with the HCM team to expand global payroll support for the full financial chart field. I'm really thrilled about this. This is finally done. This, I'm very happy. In Image 33, we, do, we support the global payroll support. The integration between global payroll and GL is, is done from a, from a um, chart field perspective. For the heart of financials, we focus on expansions and the heart being the, the GL size. We focus on expansions that deliver efficiency, oh God, efficiency, such as the mass delete of journals and the ability to submit journals in bulk for approval. One of the most recent is to provide visibility into the history of denied journals. Again, very re, uh, heavily requested uh, enhancement requests, which we've added to the, to the product uh, support. From a roadmap perspective, customers are asking for continued focus on efficiency and greater control for the period close. Customers are looking for the ability to control the type of activity that is processed through the GL during the financial close schedule. They're also asking for a way to visualize the status of the different entities with respect to the close and efficient mechanisms to manage the open periods. And the control of the period close really that did come from our financial services uh, group, insurance to be exact. But once we started looking at this and asking questions about it, um, we realize that this is something that every customer wants. Higher ed, public sector, everyone needs the ability to say, today is this part of the close, I'm going to allow this, this source as an example. And what this has given us guys, or what this will give us is the ability to control activity in GL by source. I know this is something that our customers have long requested as, as a separate issue from just the close schedule. So look for that, it's coming up soon. 
As you all know, PeopleSoft has had a long and focused history on providing central frameworks that all applications can plug into for value add to our customers. These are some examples of frameworks that have been delivered and which the applications are adopting over time. So please look at what, as an example, approval delegations. We've leveraged in procurement, expenses, and payment requests. Keep an eye. Look for um, the ability to provide notifications via text messaging. This is enabled by people tools, and this is something the applications are, are looking to adopt as we speak. Um, the, we've just released the first adoption of drop zones on Classic Plus. I talked about drop zones from the perspective of Fluid for payment requests. So we had the ability to create a drop zone where we open a, a box, if you will, on a page and you can put in the fields that you want on that page. So that was done for Fluid. Now we are, we are able to create drop zones on Classic Plus pages. And we delivered the Classic Plus pages, Procure to Pay, Image 36. Again, it just went out the door. So we're looking for examples for your thoughts and, and, and um, enhancement requests with regards to where else do we put drop zones? Should we put them in all of the transactional pages as an example? Should we put them, should we start looking at the setup pages and which ones are those? You can imagine there's many of them in, in the ERP. All right, so the ability to delete, so one of the, the big changes that we're making is the, ma the management of run controls. And the ability to delete run controls is something that all customers have asked for over time. We're actually working on a framework that will allow customers to delete run controls from an end user and administrator perspective. This expansion, this expansion is going to leverage. It's not just expected, it's gonna be required. It's gonna require people tools 858. Again, it's a roadmap item, but it's coming out fairly soon. Page and field configurator, one of our newest tools in the, in the bag, bag of PeopleSoft tricks, if you will, um, allows you to change page and field properties purely through configuration. So imagine <clears throat> you can hide fields or entire pages, modify field labels, disable fields, to name a few of its features. This helps avoid customizations and has been hugely popular with customers. We've even added the ability to mask fields and prompt fields and prompts for sensitive data. So imagine just one of these things on any PeopleSoft page, just changing a label on a field, basically customizes the whole page. When you do it through page and field configurator, when you tell us I'm changing the label on this field for this page, oh, and by the way, this page as it is rolled out to these people, okay, is gonna look different than it's rolled out to other people. So please look at Page and Field Configurator. One customer looked at this just when we first started rolling it out and they estimated they're actually starting to leverage it as we speak and tell us the results. They felt they can reduce their, eliminate their UI customizations by 60 to 70%. That's pretty awesome because if we can get rid of these customizations, right? we can actually focus on implementing the new enhancements, the Kibana tool, the chatbots, the IoT asset monitoring cloud service, the other cloud services that Oracle has that connect to PeopleSoft. So we can actually do more for the organization than just deal with, with customization. And these are the steps I wanted to take a shot at just putting out the basic steps that you need to take to implement the use of the patient field configurator. So there's actually detailed documentation on this. I also wanted to share with you guys um, the robust list of enhancements that are being considered for the roadmap for this really fantastic tool. And it really is fantastic. It allows us to do something that we had not been able to do before. So I wanna make clear, when you configure, when you change a label on a page, right? In, in a particular, you got an image and you start to leverage page and field configurator and you configure a page. Once you move forward, you don't have to do this anymore. And we will not overwrite, over, over, overrule, override what you've done. We're not gonna bring you back to where you were, right? Before this. So please look at using this tool, so it's fantastic. So there's so much to cover, both in terms of what's been delivered that can bring our organization value and what's on the roadmap as well. I started out with an eye chart of what we've delivered over the last couple of years or so, just to give a sense of where, what has happened. And it's, it doesn't do it justice. And I'm going to kind of uh, sh sh uh, finish up with 
these are some of the items that we've discussed, some of them we've discussed, others we did not, right? Um, but these are the items in the same themes or in the same vein, if you will, across the ERP. There's, not a, there's no way for me to put all of the things that are, that are possible. There are, though, um, available channels for customers to look at what has been delivered and what's coming. So the cumulative feature overview tool, the CFO tool, is a fantastic tool. I use it all the time. If I want to know when we deliver something, I actually go to this tool because it's, the, it's the, 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 the site that has all the information. And the PeopleSoft plan features and enhancements, that's showing what we have going, coming or going on in the roadmap. And I have to say, we don't put every little thing there because we're trying to, to keep, to, to be focused here. Um, so these are some of the bigger items that we have on the roadmap. And we've tried to keep it to an 18 to 24 month uh, kind of plan. So we don't put something out there that hangs out forever and you get the sense that we're not doing anything, but that's not true. So we actually change it. Um, we go over our roadmap reviews every few months to see, does our roadmap still make sense? Do we need to change anything? Obviously, you know, the, the virus that came up has changed things a little bit, but we're still on, on track to deliver what we were intending to deliver anyway, on top of the changes that we made. So the plan features and enhancements is a dynamic list and it continuously changes. If I'm having, a tr I'm having trouble with something, I may remove it from the site and put it back because we, we were able to get through what we were willing to get through or we worked out an issue that we had. So please look at the plan features and enhancements. And of course, the YouTube channel has our spotlights. It has the video feature overview so the customers, so you can see, um, kind of the, give it, get a sense of what's going on with the PeopleSoft um, platform. And of course, our blog sites as well. So I want to thank you guys for attending this webinar. I know it was long, but uh, and, and for your continued support of PeopleSoft ERP. Do we have questions that we'd like to take? And I think the sales team may have uh, some questions to ask in general. For any question, please unmute yourself before and uh, shoot the question after that. So everything is great. Everything is clear, guys. N nothing, no questions. It's crystal. You know, I love questions. Uh, hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, uh, Nikolai Teshner from uh, Netixis. Uh, I have uh, one question about the PeopleSoft Tools version. Uh, and I want to know, because I use um, PeopleSoft uh, FSCM and also uh, PeopleSoft EPM uh, product. And I want to know if the People Tools uh, uh, 8 dot uh what, what is the last uh, 57 version uh, well the, the latest the latest people the latest people tools is 858 but the one that's also supported still is 857 yeah and um which one is uh, supported uh, for uh, epm so the EPM suite is actually out of support already. Yeah. Um, we, 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 yeah, we have the support policy online. Uh, do you have access to that support policy or we can send it to you? Yeah, I have access, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the, the EPM uh, platform, we, we, we provided customers with a, uh, a roadmap, if you will, or a plan, and we provided advanced warning that there, there, there's, a, there's a point in time which this will stop because uh, there are, are other Oracle products that are available for customers to use. Um, and so EPM, as far as I can, as far as I remember, is, is out of uh, Premier support, right? Yeah. So we had extended support for a time and that time has come and gone. 
Do, do you still have, uh, I don't think we've extended support on the, on the suite. Mm -hmm. So which products are you using in EPM, if I may ask? Uh, 9.1. Uh, Right, 9.1, but which products? Like, are you using um, global consolidations? Are you using activity-based management? What are, you, what are you using in APM? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I think it'd be good if the um, Oracle team were to, to have a conversation regarding what products in PeopleSoft EPM you're using yeah. and perhaps making recommendations about what you can use. So for example, we had customers that were using EPM, PeopleSoft EPM is a, was a, an interesting combination of solution sets. It yep. took um, analytics that had the warehouses, which there are equivalents. Oracle, the Oracle warehouses are very powerful. Uh, in fact, one of the Oracle BI tools, Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition, We've actually used that tool on top of PeopleSoft GL. So the Oracle BI solutions are very powerful. You would, if you were using the warehouses in APM, you would be gaining if you moved into the Oracle BI solutions and the, and the current cloud service. So that would be a fantastic move. Um, if you're using, if you were using, or if you are using the planning and budgeting, EPM planning and budgeting, um, certainly the Hyperion planning solutions are I equivalent, you know, at least equivalent, if not better. Um, they, have, they have expanded their abilities over time as well. And they, our customers are, customers that have planning and budgeting have moved to the Hyperion solutions and even the cloud solutions. So it's a great way for PeopleSoft customers to start leveraging the cloud service, the cloud services that Oracle has in conjunction with their um, PeopleSoft ERP, as an example. Mm -hmm. And if you're using other solutions like um, ABM or FTP or Global Consolidations, there are equivalents of those as well that you can talk to the team about. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Sure. If you want to ask your question in French, maybe uh, Liliana, Charles, or me can translate. Go ahead. Il n'y a plus de, de questions, Sabine. On peut lancer si tu es aussi d'accord. Entre temps, peut-être qu'on aura aussi d'autres questions. Euh, le petit sondage que Charles a déjà créé et qu'il peut, peut lancer. On, nous avons préparé un sondage justement puisqu'on parle des versions PeopleSoft. Euh, il y a, voilà, on sait tous des, des versions différentes pour savoir justement euh, quelle est votre version actuelle et pour qu'on puisse avoir plus de visibilité, surtout justement pour nos équipes euh, de développement de, de produits. C'est bien si on fait comme ça, Sabine Parfait. Merci, Liliana. Merci à toi aussi. Charles, euh, tu peux lancer euh, le petit sondage euh, Voilà, merci. <rire> merci, Charles. Est-ce que vous pouvez répondre au sondage en cochant les cases qui vous concernent, s'il vous plaît Oui, mais on ne peut pas cocher plusieurs cases. Ah, mince. On peut utiliser plusieurs produits. Tout à fait. Ah oui, c'est vrai, mais voilà, c'est une bonne suggestion qu'on va prendre pour la prochaine session. Merci. On n'a pas pensé, c'est vrai. All right, guys, I see that a number of you are on 857 and older version of people tools. Please, please, please move forward on people tools. It's critically important. Um, and I see that everyone is on 92. Excellent. I love that. That's fantastic. And you're all using FSCM, of course. It's the best, right? <laughs> sorry. The Oracle team is sorry, guys. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> 
thank you, Amira, because <laughs> indeed this is the interactive session that we waited. So thank you. <laughs> this was the, the sure, poll. No problem. Of the poll. Yeah. I, yeah, I see 855. Those of you on 855, you need to get off 855, right? It's not <laughs> even supported. So please get off. <laughs> um, 858 is out and it's, it's a really good tool for these. So start leveraging it. Sorry, I'm going to shut up now. But, I, see, but, I see one person on, on 9-1. Um, I see one customer on 9-1. Is that right? Just a second. Yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, if, the, if the customer on 9-1 has any questions, I'd love to answer them. Um, love to, you know, get you to make a move to something. So you have options, obviously, at Oracle. You can move to the Oracle Cloud. You can also move to 9.2 and put PeopleSoft on Oracle Cloud infrastructure. You can put it on OCI. So you don't have to manage your world. We can do it for you. Um, or you can do it in a different, there are a myriad of ways of doing this. But certainly at Oracle, you have options. I'm concerned though about you being on 9.1 in the first place. Thank you, Amira. Sure. Any other questions, guys? Any any uh, pressing issues? Um, it could be an issue, or it could be a question about. I know I didn't cover everything. Believe me, um, there's no way to do that. A good way to do that. Um, are the, is there an area that you know you're you're having problems with? Is reporting a problem? It's always something that comes up. Um, and that's why we're heavily focused on, on looking at Kibana as we speak, because we feel that, first of all, it handles loads well. It, it, um, it's not sitting on the database tables, so it's not creating an overhead from a performance standpoint. Um, and if we can index the data correctly or differently, if you will, sometimes that could be helpful as well. So we're, we're, we're trying to use it to the best that we can for the different areas, but we would love to hear your feedback. You know, if you say, I want to be able to report on this and this, I have just have not been able to do it because of the structure or because of the overhead or whatever it is, we'd love to hear back from you. Um, if the French user group is, has a regular meeting, I would love to attend. So I'm going to make the offer and um, we can see where we go from here. If you guys have regular meetings and, you know, that we can, it can be the more discussion going forward and, and um, giving feedback, that would be awesome. I'm happy to do that as well. Thank you again, Amira. I think that uh, Sabine, being the representative of the French user group, can, uh, can write this down because it's an important uh, help that, that you provide to all of us. So thank you. I'll take this forward to, uh, to Sabine and uh, together we'll come back to you for sure. Thank you. Sure. Now, thank you. And, um, sure. No, you're welcome. I'm happy to, to be here today. Hopefully this is helpful. If I, if you guys, you know, if anybody wants to speak up and give feedback, I'd love to hear it. So it's fine if it's bad. If you have a problem, it's okay. I'd love to hear it. <laughs> and, um, you know, if there's, you know, what can, what can we do? What can we do to help? Right. I'd love to hear that as well. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, regarding the poll, I see that uh, only six person uh, answered. So if, if, if there is any issue with the, the poll showing up on your screen, please let us know. If there are no other questions, I think we can prepare to uh, finish our session. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just add, uh, I'll just uh, complete what Amira said, the fact that if you have issues uh, for us, it's now the moment to, to mention it, or if not, uh, in a future session, because indeed, uh, 
our product strategy team is here precisely to, to receive your feedback and to know which are the points that have to be improved for uh, the solution you are using, especially now for people of TRP. So also for me personally, I think this is uh, a very important uh, point to, uh, to retain because this is the, in the end uh, the main objective of this kind of discussions we are having. Yeah, and the other thing I wanted to mention, guys, actually two members of my team joined us this morning. You heard Jen tell me what to do with Kibana because I, me as a user, you know, I messed up. Um, so Jen actually handles the GL and the common functions, the accounting within financials. She does a number of cross product um, area focus on top of GL. Um, but also we have Madhu who works for me as well. She looks at um, billing AR, e-bill, and she's taking on additional responsibility, God help her. Uh, accounts payable, e-settlements, um, and I generally handle cash and treasury areas myself. But so if there are questions for, the, for, for my team, we'll be happy to help. If there are questions across the ERP, I will see if I can answer the question. If not, I will bring it back to the Oracle team, to the PeopleSoft team, and have them get an answer for you. So it's an opportunity to ask your burning questions while you have us here. But again, we can certainly get on the, the user group uh, cadence calls if, they, if there is a regular call, maybe once a quarter, whatever, whatever you guys have. We do join calls of the user groups, um, functional, what I call the functional user groups. They usually have monthly calls and we do join those. So we are making the offer if, if, that, if, that, if that's of help to, to, to all of you. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, Amira. No problem. And once we all can travel, I'm coming out to France, you know? <laughs> Hopefully we will all be able to travel, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you're welcome, you're welcome. To see you soon. Oh. Uh, yeah. Not, not for uh, not for the moment. Uh, you, you you can travel uh, in in uh, France for the moment. <laughs> oh, that's okay. No, I'm not planning on soon. But uh, um, once we're able to, I, I I'd love to be able to visit. Yeah. Sure. If not for work, I'm gonna come and and spend some money in France. You know, so I'll be, I'll play tourist. Okay. <laughs> help the lo help the local local economy there. That's right. That's right. The last time I was there for business, it was really fun. And uh, I actually went to France on my honeymoon. So it's, back, it's time for my husband and I to go back. So I think we can finish the session. Thank you again, Amira, for uh, your presentation. As you've said, uh, Hopefully, we will see as much as possible and as soon as possible in France, why not, for uh, a live presentation. Uh, thank you all for being uh, connected. Uh, if you need uh, help, uh, additional details, uh, you can uh, send your questions to Sabine or uh, to me or my colleague uh, Charles. So we'll come back to, to you uh, as soon as possible. Thank you to you all.